Hi, Jen. Welcome back to Breaking Beauty Podcast. It's such an honor to sit down with you and chat about everything that's been going on. But it has been a minute since we've seen you and connected with you. 2018, I think. Yeah. So catch us up on like what you've been up to. Guys, a lot's gone on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 2018, that's crazy. Doesn't yes. it feel yeah. like 30 years ago? Uh, yes. Yes. I know. The before times. So I have taken on a lot. I guess as we get older, as women, don't we just take on more jobs? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Yes. I thought I was exhausted in 2018 and now 2024, <laughs> me is laughing. Yes. 2019, I went to a therapy camp. <laughs> 2020, had my son, our daughter, was born in 2022, got two more dogs and yeah. built Rain Addicts into this incredible brand and Way is still growing and doing really well. Our team is now almost 90 people That's away. That's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. And so I've been working hard. Yeah. yeah I yeah. kept busy during the pandemic, doing a lot of tutorials, teaching everyone how to cut their um, husband's or boyfriend's <laughs> hair at home. Yeah, yeah. It was really fun. But yeah, I, I have been... I'm trying to think of like what that era is like. I, I was really, I guess, like the seeds had been planted in 2016, and mm-hmm. like I was really like gardening and and building yeah. the teams and the brands up. Yeah. yeah, we learn how to multitask us moms in the best way, I think, and just figuring out what's important and what to let go. Yeah, right? but don't you look at your life and you're like, how? Like how? How? Uh, I, yeah. How? how, how? It's yes, wild. I do. It's <laughs> a daily. We're awesome. You're yeah. awesome. Um, so you've worked with huge celebrities over the years, everything from touring with Madonna and her backup dancers in the early days oh to the Kardashians, obviously. Um, when you're working at that level, you have to work. You have to be really good. You also have to be really fast. Yeah. Curious if you've ever had a time where you've kind of like pulled a rabbit out of a hat. Oh, my God, my whole career, (laughs) you know, like that's the one thing I really learned from assisting and apprenticing Mm -hmm. for as long as I did. I was a really late bloomer. Like I started working in a salon and I assisted for a very long time, like Mm -hmm. at least five or six years. Yeah. And then was on my own in the salon learning kind of how to manage my clientele. But you had to be quick because you had to stay on your, the hour. Right. Yeah. You know, so I had to learn how to have the gift for gab and also style hair and make it look good and yeah. get everyone out the door in time. So mm-hmm. um, that's when I first really like focused on my time management. And then I'd say my time working backstage at fashion shows. Yeah. Like yeah. I used to go to Paris and work on Guido's team and worked with like Bob Racine in New York. And I learned that that is so fast. You have models coming in from shows, and you have no time at all. So that's where I learned. And Danilo's so amazing at this. Yes, like yes. creating shapes and doing it quickly, and grabbing extensions and hair pieces, and figuring yeah. out how to to do it. But he's, yeah, he's incredible. I did a shoot with him once back in my magazine days, and he was at that time the only hairstylist I had ever worked with and witnessed where. He has those like old school methods where he can create that volume and do the sculptural thing. And it looked retouched when it was not retouched. Like, you know, when you're looking on the monitor to see what's going on, it was just like, it's done. Yeah. It was just a dream. I love him so much. And, you know, he's really good at like the like the roller set, like knowing how to set the hair and then how to manipulate it and do it quickly. But yes. And then I found myself in my career, like on planes, like literally, you know, I figuring out hair before we land and things don't always go as planned. And so a lot of times glam has 30 minutes and you just have to figure it out. Yeah. 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 Still the shiniest hair in the business. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. She does. (laughs) A little bit of (laughs) weight. So good. Plug, plug. And um, I'd like to talk to you about the whole notion of hair trends, because obviously working backstage and us working as editors for so many years, it was like the bread and butter of like what we created content around and everything and what, you know, you could show to your clients or they'd be bringing in the picture from a magazine and whatever. But I just feel like the it's like everything is just so sped up now. Like trends just seem like. There's just so many. It's so hard to keep on top of it. So what's yeah. your feeling on them these days? I think we're going to retire the word. You do? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I like started my career pre-digital world. And I remember like just getting the magazines and yeah. being like, oh my God, what are we into? And cutting the pictures out and putting it in a little photo album in the salon. And I'd have my clients pick and choose and just kind of point to what they liked. 
But now, like you said, like the world is moving as fast as like we're scrolling. And I just think that like, it's an exciting time though. Cause mm-hmm. I think we're in a place where people can share their style and, and share it so easily. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, there's so much information and so many inspiring looks out there that I don't think that we are in like the trend era. I think it's yeah. kind of done. I think, you know, self-expression, there's so many amazing options. And mm-hmm. that's what's so exciting also about like creating hair tools right now is like, there's so many people who know how to do their hair. And like I, when I was like, you know, the, all these alpha generation, the <laughs> yeah, kids yeah. that are like no skincare, they also know how to do their hair. And yeah. I'm like, I was a mess at that age. I didn't yeah. know anything. I had like proactive and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's so you know? true. But yeah, I think trends are kind of like, I think it's just, there's so much out there that mm-hmm. I don't, I don't yeah. really believe in trends anymore. It, there's so many trends that there's no trends. That's you know, right. In yeah. a way. Yeah. Um, we are seeing, though, all of a sudden, a resurgence of Texas hair <laughs> with Miley and Beyonce. Um, love it. Love it. Here for it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ugh. What's your favorite way to get that larger than life look? Honestly, it really starts in the shower. I yeah. think like making sure that your hair is clean and, you know, the direction that you're going to blow dry your hair, flipping your head upside down, really like working at the angle that you're drying, using your finger to lift, using mm-hmm. product. I, I still love a mousse. Yeah. I love a volumizing spray. I love anything that like kind of helps if your hair doesn't really hold mm-hmm. a style, like using products that will help to, you know, manipulate your hair. And then um, obviously like our tools are amazing. Mm-hmm. I have, oh, I don't even know if I can mention it, but there is, I can. Okay, great. You guys, you're going to freak out. <laughs> Tell us. We're doing this amazing hot round brush that's going to be launching at Sephora. And Mm -hmm. I've had the prototype for a a little over a year now. When I tell you, I couldn't keep the prototype in my office or at my house because like one client started telling another client and then they were like, wait, I'm supposed to have this. What is this? I saw she had this brush. I could not keep it like in stock. And it is incredible for getting volume quickly and making it really last and manipulating all hair types. It's yeah. Such a game changer. The sisterhood of the traveling hair uh, hairbrush. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of. But is that the kind where it's like wet to dry, that no. sort of? Or is it the yeah. other kind where it's like a thermal Explain brush? It. Yeah. So one of our taglines is like, we're styles in no time that lasts a long time. And that's really kind of what the ethos is of this brush. Um, it's for all hair types. So like if you have a hard time holding a style or really manipulating your hair with air. Right. Air is incredible, right? For certain hair types, but Mm -hmm. not for all. Mm -hmm. And if you have like wavy hair, curly hair, if you have hair that's hard, like maybe it's really thick and Mm -hmm. it's just really hard to manipulate it in all environments. Mm -hmm. This is where we come in. So it's like a thermal heat. It's a brush that's like a curling iron and a brush had a baby. Okay. Okay. So you're able to go in and get shape and not flatten the hair Mm -hmm. and get really nice, amazing either waves or get a really gorgeous bounce or just look like you stepped out of the salon literally okay yeah i need to try that oh no i don't want vidal soon to sue me i think that was their tagline <laughs> <laughs> sometimes these things stick you know yeah. yeah um are you how do you feel about those blow dryer curling like round brush blow dryers and one? Dry. are they dead yeah. to you or no, no no not at all okay. like if anything you know i i have to tell you like the reason that this brand even exists is because of my time really working with dyson yeah mm-hmm. i think that all the technology and all the money that's put into those tools are incredible. And mm-hmm. like I said, they work really well for certain hair types. Yeah. But I had, you know, seven years of people saying, A, I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. B, I wish I, I knew how to make my hair, you know, look good throughout like the day mm-hmm. or I step out into like humidity and it still looks good. Yeah. And, you know, another thing was everyone was saying, I, you know, just it didn't feel like it was accessible mm-hmm. and it felt like, yeah. You know, they're like, I wish you would do a giveaway. I was getting that all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was just like, you know what? We need to really create like accessible hair tools that work for everybody. And and it was a no brainer. But, you know, I know that like people really were in like an air era. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think it was really cute during the pandemic. But I think we're out and about. And I think we really need to like get styles quickly that really Mm -hmm. work. Yeah. Right. And last. Fair. Yeah. yeah. I think though what you're talking about is maybe something different than what Jet's talking about, no, no, right? No, no, yeah, let's just say it. Revlon oh God, is dead s- to Carlene, so oh, I can talk I, about I've it. I've trashed it. I've de- <laughs> I've de-influenced it loudly and proudly because it destroyed my hair. At first I was like, this is the best thing ever. I'm lazy slash busy. I'm a mom. I'm on the go. This is what I'm going to do. And then like a year later, my hair was just completely fried. 
And uh, I was like, what is going on? And it actually took me a long time to realize it was that thing. Yeah. Just going from wet to dry with it, like, you know, on the high heat, yeah. right, right pressed next to yeah. my head. So, yeah. That's here's like a my... blow dryer meets round brush. Yes. 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 Different. Yes, but here's mm-hmm. the thing. Curling iron to round brush yes. is so much Different. faster. Yes. So here's my thing. I'm like, just rough dry, get through yeah. your hair, get it dry. Okay? Yes, 100%. Even if it's like 95% dry, get it dry yeah. quickly. Don't sit there and like, like the... <laughs> Right, waiting. Which is what I was doing. Motion. I was like going for. <laughs> no. I was like, do it, do it. <laughs> no, get no, no, to no. that curling. You know. I think it's all about getting through, getting your hair just rough dried, and yeah. then going through with right. this brush, or even with our curling iron or a curling wand, and like shaping your hair. It just is faster. Yeah. But that's our whole goal is just get you out of the door faster. Right. And we have like people have had. I mean, I don't want to like yeah. label the, yeah. the brands, but there yeah. are some mass brands out there right. that you know you realize like it isn't really helping my hair the way I want it to, or my hair is getting fried or, yeah. you know, it's just kind of yeah. like you get what you pay for. And, right. And so I really wanted to make sure that like we were doing some sort of recycling program yes. and it's the first of its kind with PACT. Yeah, Pacted. that's amazing. Yeah. So they're going to help us actually in Sephora, we have a little QR code on shelf that you mm-hmm. can like take a little picture of it and you can go and get a label sent to you. So we're going to make it really easy for you to donate your tools and they're going to like refurbish them. They're going to donate them to Project Glimmer, which is oh, that's so great. really incredible mm-hmm. program. Yeah. So we're making it really easy for you to get right. rid of like the mass brands that maybe you've grown out of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or just don't use anymore. Right. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So smart. Fair. Um, so what's the one thing that you've achieved with your hair tools um, that you're the most proud of? Because it's it seems like it would be hard to do like create to get well to yes. get something that's so really great and to your standard yes. at a really accessible price point yeah. or was there another challenge you had to overcome that you were like I'm proud we did that yeah I mean you know this is my second time around so I've mm-hmm. learned so much mm-hmm. and honestly I I owe a lot to like our CEO at Way Colin mm-hmm. Walsh because he's really like helped me to be a part of so many things. And I've seen the growth of that brand and what it takes to really like build a strong team. Yeah. So I would say like the biggest hurdle for me, I mean, listen, I got to really do everything that I wanted to. And I was lucky enough that I got one of my best friends. She's one of my first clients ever. Her name's Michaeline DeJoria. Mm-hmm. Her father started Paul Mitchell. Okay, cool. And she's now their CEO. And yes. we've just grown up together here in LA for like the past 24 years being really good friends. Okay. We always said, let's do a brand together. Let's mm. do a brand. And I was at a point where I was like, Michaeleen, I weigh is in a place where like, I feel like we have a strong team. Yeah. I have the bandwidth now. Mm-hmm. And like, it, this is the time to do the tools. And yeah. so she's made it so amazingly like streamlined. And so like, I didn't drown in the 700 prototypes. Like mm-hmm. we really got to like, get focused and figure out what the price point was that we wanted, how innovative we mm-hmm. wanted the tools to be. And so like the little things, like making it so we have our power bottom base yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and we have like attachments. So it's easy to pack, but it's also like better for the planet. Mm-hmm. And we were able to really like get the pulp trays and all the recyclable packaging yeah. that we wanted to have. And so it's been, I mean, knock on wood, like I, I probably can't get into too much detail about it, but I was talking to another retailer and then Sephora and I are so close. And, and yeah. I was like, listen, I just want to give you a heads up. Women's Wear Daily is going to announce that like, I'm going to do my own tools. And they were like, what? <laughs> Why aren't we talking about this? And I was like, I didn't know if you'd want this. Right. They took it right then and there. Can you tell us about that whole thing you alluded to sending out the prototype and feedback you may have gotten? Like what was the most surprising thing or was there something really hilarious that happened? Like, do you have a story there? Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. I can kind of tell when I'm, I, I don't always get to do this, but a lot of times like we have focus groups now actually with our followers at Way and and now we're building it at Maine as well. So there's not a lot of opportunities I have to like send out product to mm-hmm. friends. I used to yeah. do it at the very beginning of Way all the time. Right. But this brush, I knew it was different. I knew it was special. When I got it to a place where the size was perfect, it was performing really well. We made it exactly the way that we wanted to make it. And it didn't exist the way that we we had it. There was like a brand in Europe that had something similar, but this worked so well. And it's universal voltage. So you can take it everywhere around Ooh. the world with you. And so when I had it and I was like, damn, this is good. And then I used it on a client. And then like, honestly, it spread like wildfire. And I think mm-hmm. for me, there's been a few products even on the wayside where mm-hmm. I just knew it was a hit. Like our super dry shampoo was such a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and listen, there's also some flops. I have friends that like, <laughs> Never forget the dry shampoo foam drama <laughs> that we had away. Like, 
you live and you learn. But I <laughs> knew that this brush was really special because really mm-hmm. like it was like the friends of the friends. And then the other hairstylist that works with people and everyone was just like kind of buzzing about it. So yeah. I, what was specific feedback? Do you remember anything that stuck with you in the group chat? Oh my God, I've got screen grabs. It was like, well, there's two sides. So there was a, mm-hmm. there's a green that's a extended length mm-hmm. okay. and a little bit of a smaller barrel. And then our blue is like the um, wider barrel. And so I got a lot of like, wait, she has the green. I have the blue. I need to get, the gr- I need the blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh so, my gosh. Yeah, I definitely had, um, I, I, I just, just now collected all of my prototypes back and like got the real deal with our packaging to everyone. And yeah. it, it was, it's so fun. It's so fun to like, create and be able to do this and and get that kind of like feedback yeah it's mm-hmm. all happening in the group chat now right you know? uh, listen i wish i could afford that group chat <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could afford a campaign with the group chat we'll see yeah, yeah. one day yeah obsessed um so let's talk a little bit about hair health and heat styling tools because there's obvious do's and don'ts, but I'm not a hairstylist. So what are what are your do's and don'ts for heat styling to make sure that your hair isn't fried? Yeah. You know, I think like the one thing is everybody tends to like maybe wash their hair too much. OK. And styles a little too much. I definitely like love a dry shampoo. Mm-hmm. I think definitely invest in dry shampoo and invest in good tools that will get the job done and really make it so your hair is going to last. Right. Um, I can't keep talking about the brush, but I will say <laughs> <laughs> like for like third day, fourth day hair to okay. like revamp it. It's really amazing. Um, but I would say, you know, definitely make sure that you're taking the time to like do treatments. OK. Um, I love our way gloss. It's mm-hmm. kind of like an it's, it's like going to the salon and getting your color done yeah. and your hair looks. Meanwhile, like so good two or three days later and really shiny and glossy. Mm-hmm. So and I would say like I love heat protectants. I think there's really good brands that make good heat protectants out there and just like, taking care of your hair the way mm-hmm. you would like your skin. Yeah. 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 Hydration. How do you avoid a kink when curling your hair? You must get this question the most. I yeah, feel like I, when I and it's like certain angles and then it tends to be in the front. And when I get that kink, it's like impossible to get it out. Yeah. So Can I tell you, that was also something that we really thought about when we were creating our curling iron mm-hmm. because, you know, a lot of like people complain about the handle being like giving you that dent yeah. when you're doing a curl. Um, we actually have like a really great ceramic barrel that it makes it slide even with the flat iron. It mm-hmm. makes it like glide and slide through the hair really easily. It makes a huge difference because like if you have that type of a barrel, like you don't get stuck. Right. You know, if you have like mm-hmm. a little bit of like even damaged hair that sometimes gets stuck and you get that little end out. Yeah. It really like glides and moves mm-hmm. with you. So the best thing is to really like, I think, keep moving as you're doing it. Don't right. just sit for too long. Yeah. If you're doing like a blowout or like a roller set, you would want to take your hair mm-hmm. to the very end and then roll it in and kind of hold it for seven to 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. But I would just say like, you want to make sure that you're not like pushing too hard. I really love like opening up the barrel the clip yeah just keeping your your finger on it and kind of using the curling iron as a wand if you yeah if you need to so that mm-hmm. you don't get those dents yeah. right but is there an undo button like how do you undo it for what carlene <laughs> was just talking about yeah i mean i would say the best thing is to really like take even a flat iron and you can kind of like go over that piece mm-hmm. and manipulate it the way that you need to okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what if i said just wash your hair and start all <laughs> that, that sounds perfect <laughs> that's the move yeah <laughs> yeah um and let's talk about temperature settings mm-hmm. because let's be real like i don't think anyone's using the lowest setting jen like what do you think okay. Do you have so a focus that, group on this? Yes, yes, we do. But that's the biggest <laughs> mistake, too. I think like we have been trained to just crank up the heat mm-hmm. because we think it's going to get the job done faster. You do not need to do that, especially like get to know your hair type. Like, if you have fine to medium hair, you're going to start on the lower temperature. Okay. And that's not what people want to hear. But yeah. it really is like you don't need to, to turn it up all the way. But there are some hair types like if you have thicker hair, or you have hair that's like textured and you really want to manipulate it. You need mm-hmm. to turn it up. So. We did think about that. And I I think there's a lot of, um, you know, like learnings with that. Like you just need to try it lower, see how it goes. Right. We do not need to all be at the highest temperature setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, like some of the um, logic there, it feels like, is I need this to stay. Like for those of us where the curl falls out easily. So maybe you have another tip for that instead of cranking it yeah like don't go all the way up but also on the flip side like there's some people that need to get their hair really smooth or want to really like manipulate it and and make a style that really lasts Mm -hmm. and maybe you're not going high enough with the heat so right i really think you need to play around with it Mm -hmm. you need to like either crank it up 
go down a notch and, and see what works for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and also like hairspray. Yeah. You know, product really will help with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are there, is there anyone out here still like spraying it on the wand? Oh, spray, yeah. You know, you know, when you would get oh, like back God, in the no. day, you get like the, and the crusty smoke brown no. yes. and the smoke and the yeah. smell. Oh, I did that in middle school for sure. Yes. yes. I so remember that no-no? smell. Yeah. Yes. That specific smell. And of, that like, crusty the look hitting. on the oh. wand and it's never coming off. Never. Aquanet. Yeah. That's so funny. Oh, so, Aquanet was the best. Um, yeah. You know, I actually really love doing like a light veil of like a medium hold hairspray mm-hmm. all throughout your hair and getting like our detangling brush is incredible and kind of brushing through it and then going in with the tools. I think it's a okay. really smart way of like getting your hair to, to last. Yeah. Any, any favorite hairspray that you like to use for, the, like, for that specific purpose? Oh, my God. Okay, so... For people who really like like a, sh- a shellac or like a yeah. really strong, you really want to like amp it up. I think Got to Be has a really great. It's that yellow can everybody's seen. I, it's my new. Yeah. It's my new favorite. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's great. I called it in because I had like a little bit of hair regrowth, and it's just like for the first time in my life, these things that are not behaving. It's the only one that'll hold them down. Yeah. Truly, it yeah. holds so well. Yeah. I think also there's so many great styling brands yeah. out there. I think Paul Mitchell has really great hairsprays. Like okay, they have cool. a really flexible. Hairspray that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. Like I've been filming tutorials and using like all kinds of brands. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, Big Sexy I think has a really nice hairspray. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. great. Come yeah. back, Big and Sexy. And Balmain <laughs> has really great hairsprays. Really? Okay. Yeah, to I know. Prop with. Yeah, I really like like okay. their medium hold hairspray I've used for years on set. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I love that. A high okay. and a low, and also my favorite ever, which is the European version of Elnet. Which I, I always stock that. up on. Well, I was gonna say the European version of Balmain. Oh, that's annoying for everybody. But is it different? Yeah, we have different rules here. Yeah. You know, so maybe mm-hmm. it's not good to be using. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, have you ever burned yourself with a tool? <laughs> and what do you put on it after? This happened to me yesterday. Do you know what's funny? I was joking with my partner, Mike Lean, about this. I was like, maybe we should put the logo on the barrel. The people burn themselves. We got oh my it. god! <laughs> Brand it. <laughs> Literally, oh I was watching gosh. too much Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, have I burned myself? No. Have I burned a client? <gasps> yes. Ooh. Actually, I'm really good friends with her still. But okay, one of Madonna's dancers. She oh, is now Dua Lipa's choreographer. Yeah, a lot of other things. Shout out to Charm. She's so amazing. And I, we were backstage, and it was just like we were going so fast. Mm-hmm. Quick change. Yeah. Before. And she turned, I went in and, she, oh my and I'll gosh. never forget it. And what I never do? have done it since then, actually. What did, oh, you, okay. did you put something on it? What did you do? Oh my God, I felt so bad. Yeah. And we're still so close now. Like, yeah. We laugh about it now, but she, yeah, okay. she was, she was super understanding about yeah. it. But poor thing had to go out and roller skate, dance on roller skates <laughs> oh while my she was gosh. like, had a bird on her face. Yeah. <gasps> is there any t- tips to make sure you don't do that? Because you haven't done it since. Like, is it... Because when you are rushing, don't it is. Don't multitask. Because, yeah. Right. If you, yeah. Like, don't get to a position yeah. where you could, you know, it doesn't happen. Does it happen a lot? Do you guys think it happens a lot? I mean, <laughs> it happened to me yesterday. So <laughs> I don't know. You had I the don't last know what time we was came, going on. The last time we came to LA, you had a burn on your chin. Did also. I? Oh, okay. Jesus. I had to give you psychoplast to put on there. No, yeah. from, from a curling iron? I guess, yeah. <laughs> was it your red See? bomb brush? What was uh, going no, on? No, it was a curling, curling iron. Ironies. Well, Jill taught me this method, the method <laughs> okay. where it's like you put you put the curling iron upside down, so you do this. And yes. I don't know. I guess sometimes <laughs> I just... Okay, so you got to make sure you just it's hot. So yeah. be careful. <laughs> Keep stay away from the face. You know what, though? You bring up a good point that I always tell everybody butt up, which means like the cord yes. facing up Yeah. when you're styling. And when you're styling your left side, use your right hand to hold the tool and then switch hands. When you're on your yeah. right side, hold the tool in your left hand, butt up and wrap around the same direction. That might help maybe. Right. People getting burned. Now that you say that you you mentioned this earlier, I think I actually am multitasking. I'm like in a rush and okay. I, I'm like, I look over there and then, you know, I'm then I burn myself. Okay, I'm so like, I'll, where's my phone at? Oh, guys, when cooking. Yeah. Okay. When you're on hot stove ovens <laughs> yes. and when you're on your hot tools. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's not multi- put the phone down. Yes. No. Also, never wear a scarf while you're cooking. Take it from me. Oh <laughs> Take it from me, especially if it has little strings at the bottom. Oh, no, oh my that's gosh. a good story. Oh, my oh no. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, let's talk about choosing the right curling iron barrel size, because I do think that that plays a lot into how long your style lasts, right? Yeah. So um, 
how do what were you like we need to have this size in the line and this size and this size what yeah what was your thoughts so here's the thing we started off with our curling iron is a one inch and then the curling wand is a 1.25 so mm-hmm. i wanted people to really like start off a little smaller because you'd be surprised yeah if you take a little bit more hair like take a bigger section like I'd say a two inch, two and a half inch section yeah. of hair and like wrap it around a smaller barrel, you're going to get a really nice wave. And I think sometimes people tend to think like, oh, I'm going to get a bigger barrel. So I get a bigger wave, but then that tends to fall. So right. I actually think like using a smaller barrel than you think you should, mm-hmm. taking a little bit more hair gives you a really nice look that's going to last. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good Interesting. tip. Okay. That's a good tip. What's, uh, you, do you have a blow dryer yet? No, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. You do. Okay. It's so cute. Okay. It is such a great dryer. It's super light. It yeah. weighs like literally even three pounds. These are all really light. I, yeah. They're very I cute used. and light. Yeah. yeah, so, so light and um, and easy to use. We That was one thing we wanted to do is yeah. make it really cute, but also make it lightweight. So yeah. it's really like we keep saying it's a small package, but there's power in these tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's a really good dryer. So what's the number one secret to getting the perfect blow dry at home? Ooh, the perfect blow dry at home. Okay. If you're using like a round brush and a blow dryer, I would say like um, getting duckbill clips, getting our alligator clips Mm -hmm. and really like setting the sections right after you've blown it out so that it really like has time to cool. Yeah. And and set um, using, like I said, like hairspray beforehand. Right. Even like before you put it into the wrap. Yeah. So you blow it out, put a little hairspray, wrap it up and pin it. That's going to really help your style to lock in. Yeah. So you so you do you do the with the round brush and then as you take it out, you pin it. Is that what you're saying? So you like hold take it, up it out into of the curl. brush. Yeah. yeah. Or you could buy a ton of brushes and just mm. keep the yeah. brush in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you Backstage would wanna, style. you'd want to twist it out of the brush yeah. and then kind of use your finger as a roller and wrap it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Spray your hairspray. Use your finger and then pin it and just kind of let it set. And then do your makeup and take it out and you'll see that like yeah. mm-hmm, it looks really good when you okay. just like give it that time to set. Yeah. I like that. And what about the direction of airflow? Did you think about these things when you were making your blow dryer? Because it is so important. Yeah. And I yeah. think, again, like everybody's so privy and smart now that like we never, ever use the cool shot button. Right. Like yeah. no one ever did. I never did. Yeah. yeah. And now we understand that like cooling your cuticle, like after obviously when you're blow drying, like you want to use that method we just talked about, but you could also use a cool mm-hmm. shot to really like make sure that everything stays cool and you're like cooling the cuticle and it's like getting really set. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, we, we definitely wanted to make sure that it had all of the different like temperature settings, mm-hmm. airflow settings and the cool shot button. And also I was going to show you guys, I hope we don't get sued for this, but like this is Bobby Clippy. This is so our cute. mascot. So, so cute. Who like kind of helps guide you on the website and also in store. Oh, I love that. And on our packaging and kind of gives you like little tips and pro tips on how to use your tools. Love it. Why so would you cute. get sued? Well, because I was kind of inspired by Microsoft. <laughs> oh, oh okay. do you not remember the yes, little the paper clip? Yes. Okay. Got it. Got I it. I know. I was like, we need to have a cute little mascot like that. He helped me when I was first getting on the internet. Oh, what you remember Bobby Clippy? Like, oh, yes, true, or, no, true. It, wasn't, it was called Clippy. Oh, yes, but he like, would Clippy. help guide us as we yes. were figuring out like how to use computers. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's uh, totally I right. I love that. Okay, this is adorable, everyone. So cute. And and so, yeah, there's... I love it. Um, do you... I ha- I'm going to go back to some tips before we... Because we want to leave a, enough time to do a little demo. Do you prefer that your clients come ready with freshly washed hair or does it is it better if it's like day old hair if you're styling them for like a big event or something oh like my God. that I mean I've dealt with everything under the sun I mean yeah obviously like clean freshly clean washed hair is kind of ideal unless we're doing maybe something that's like a slicked back look and usually we'll like yeah. text and talk about mm-hmm. it but can I tell you I don't have a ton of time to do clients anymore so like I'll take anything come <laughs> to me with three day four day yeah. old hair let's yeah. do this like yeah. I get so excited when I can make time and, and do clients and it's so fun for me to be able to yeah. like, I really kind of miss, I miss yeah. the salon. I miss just having that connection, you know, yeah. I'm in my, my business Barbie era right now, but yeah. yes. maybe one day. Yeah. Okay. We have one more question before we're going to do a demo for TikTok that everybody needs to go and watch with one of your amazing tools. Um, so this is kind of like one of those habits of successful people type of a question, you know, whether it's like manifesting or journaling or whatever, what do you feel like you have done like one or two game changing habits that 
you think really were instrumental in where you are today? Oh my God, I could talk about this for another hour. Okay. I love this. I feel like I always see on your Instagram, yeah. like you have prompts basically. Yeah. So let's yeah, hear. and I got to really like lean into that. Like I got to mm-hmm. tell you, being a celeb stylist mm-hmm. and being on the road really for eight years, going all over the world, mm-hmm. I did not get to have healthy habits. And so I think when the pandemic hit, I got to really lean into that because I used to be that. I used to be able to really like, I think I grew up Mormon and we were all about like setting goals and really being like strategic in the in kind of like setting your mind to get things done and, and really focusing and honing in on, on that. And so that's kind of like how I grew up. Like my dad would make me like pay rent when I was like 12 with a contract, like a fake contract. Wow. Like I've been worried about a mortgage since I was 12, <laughs> oh you my know, gosh. And, but it helped me yeah. as I became an adult because mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, oh, budget sheets. I know this. Right. You know what I mean? So I've been really, really good about my habit tracker and really like making sure that like it's that feeling of checking the box. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God, I read today. I yeah. took the dogs for a walk. I called a friend. I drank water. I wrote in my gratitude journal. And I cannot tell you, like starting the day off with a quick, even like three minute meditation and just like writing down in your phone, like mm-hmm. three things you're grateful for. It just sets the tone. Yeah. And I think making it so you have some sort of like checklist check mark that every day you can mm-hmm. get that satisfaction of checking it off. It really like holds you accountable. So I really highly recommend creating whatever kind of habit tracker you can. Okay. Yeah. What time do you get up in the morning? Oh my God. I am so scheduled. My poor children. They're like, <laughs> They know that like, they're like, it's Tuesday. We're going to have pizza and ranch tonight. <laughs> it's so sad. But um, I wake up at 640. Okay. And then I have alone time from 7 to 8 a.m. where I do a meditation and a gratitude journal. And then I get a little bit of a workout and stretch in and just the day. Yeah. Yeah. But well, that's that that's bit. my only time to have like, yeah. where yeah. no one is asking me. Yes. Anything. I've started getting up at 6 a.m. for that reason. Yeah. What's that's your everyday what? mom hair now? What do you do? God. Let's hear it. Is it a top bun? Is it the top bun? No, honestly, <laughs> I've been rocking a blowout because of that brush. Okay. Wow. I've been rocking a blowout. I've been actually doing my hair because I can get it done so quickly. Yeah. And it just looks better and I feel better. Yeah. You know, like I, I realized like I'm out of the pandemic, like, I guess just like quickness of getting ready. And I'm mm-hmm. actually like taking a minute and trying to like put on makeup and yeah. actually get dressed and like, you know, get yeah. back into it. Cause I noticed that it like changes how I present Absolutely. myself. Absolutely. And how Absolutely. I feel. Showing up for, showing up for each other and showing up for mm-hmm. work, like in a certain presentable way, I think is really powerful and sometimes not totally appreciated these yeah. days, you know? Yeah. yeah. My motto yeah. is like die on the inside, but on the outside, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Fake it. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I absolutely. love the series you do with Mary Phillips, too, about learning to do your makeup and all of that. Is it's so it? fun. Yeah. I am ridiculous. Why am I so, like, <laughs> I just am so vulnerable. No makeup. No, but and I love Mary it. Phillips teaching me how to do my makeup. Yeah, it's, I love that. I mean. She's so good. If she was my, my bestie or I had that opportunity, I'd be like, show me, contour, underpaint me, all of the uh, things. Absolutely. So. We, you guys, I just watched a new video we did. And I'm like, Mary, can you please just remind me to sit up straight? And like, I look <laughs> yes. so tired. Sh- and I'm just yeah. like. The a shell of myself. I'm like, you've got to teach me to be a model. Yeah. <laughs> What's the white eyeliner you have on right now? Is it white? Um, no, I have on. Well, Mary for my birthday yeah. last year made me my very own Mary Phillips like kit of the essentials and what Aww. she thought I should use. Oh, sweet! So I've been using Victoria Beckham eyeliner, it's the best. And yes, li- and lip liner, and it mm. is. I don't know. It's like, come up a few times this week. Great. Yeah, yeah really good. Do, what co- like? Do you use a brightening shade in there? Or, uh, what or that's I, just oh, your natural. Honestly, it's probably foundation. I didn't like oh, oh, all the way. Well, it looks no, great. Like your eyes bright. just look bright and like I do beautiful. my makeup in the car. Okay. So well, sometimes there's little things here. Look scorch. Look scorch. Thank, Thank you it. so much Thank for you, being Jen. on the show. Having me. And congrats on yes. the main addicts and the main tools and the power Thank bottoms you. and the hot yes. roller brush. I'm so excited for all of it. Now available at Sephora. I'm so, so happy that I can Thank be here. To, I'm so happy that it's out. I'm so happy I could be here and do this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And let's not wait so long. I know. I know. I know. I know. We could, we could do a whole lot. We should get you and Mary together. Yes, Beauty Besties. I d- be... I've always wanted to do a series on the podcast, Beauty Besties. Yes. And... You know what's funny? I said to Mary, I go, we should do a podcast where yeah. we glam people. Yeah. Yes. Right? Wouldn't yeah. that be so fun? Sign us up. Yes, absolutely. We're it's there. Like in the glam chair. I can think of a good name for Thank it. Thank you. We will, we will fly here just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank everyone. You Thank, Thank you. you.